So as you are aware and everyone else maybe not so aware that's outside of the cybersecurity realm, uh, such as uh, the general public that October is Cybersecurity Awareness Month. And as far as this briefing is concerned, I'm going to be talking about data backups and why it's important to back up that data. And as I go through the slides, you'll be able to see. Well, um, keeping with, uh, I guess, Stephen Covey's uh, the high, um, Seven Habits of Highly Successful People, you see the habit three is first things first. And first things first, what relates to data backup is the basic, uh, I guess, um, steps you need to take, regardless if it's in reference to cybersecurity or uh, just to keep your system safe is, you know, you got to use strong passwords. Um, particularly use a password manager, not necessarily need it, um, but like BitLocker, you can use that. Um, but if you have a safe place to store your, your passwords, that would be helpful. Please don't write them down. Um, Please don't use like specific like your birthdays, uh, things of that sort that's easily guessed. And if uh, you know you got a hit with a brute force attack, they're easily going to uh, figure out what that combination is. And turn on multi-factor authentication actually reduces the chances of that happening as well. So that's uh, very important. And that is basically all the rage now. If you don't have 2FA, uh, chances are that, that you're in trouble, especially if you're a big enterprise, especially if someone like Kaseya. Um, Recognize and report phishing. It's almost like the, you know, the neighborhood watch thing. If you see something, say something. Um, and if you get anything that looks suspicious in your inbox, as can say has been hit with a, uh, you know, a ransomware attack before, uh, you want to make sure you report that up the chain, uh, most expediently as well. And um, the software update part, I think uh, we all get the notification that it's time to update our phones, and a lot of people don't take that into consideration. That that is serious. That that is to you know, clear some hurdles. That's to close some loopholes that are out there that have been found and um, hopefully alleviate the need for you to have to pay out any amount of um, funds from uh, whether you're a business or whether you're a person. It doesn't matter. And once I get to the last slide, you'll see that it varies. Uh, the hackers really don't care. As long as they get the money, it doesn't matter where it is. Now, I put this other part on here because the why, the who, and when, I mean, it's all of us, um, all of the major countries. As you can see, what percent of the hackers are in, in each country is, uh, yes, majority of them are in China. However, uh, the United States is a, is a strong second, basically almost three times um, more hackers in the U.S. alone than it is in, say, the other countries. Um, and that is something to um, think about. I mean, we're a powerful nation. However, um, when you have countries like China and North Korea, which I'm surprised didn't make the list, they are very, very adept at um, grooming groups of hackers, including Russia, where that's all they do. And they break into systems. Of course, you know, North Korea steals cryptocurrency. They break into um, different systems, financial systems, and steal their money. And it's a lot of time what keeps them afloat. Uh, now, go to the next one and say that the reason for data backups uh, you know, essentially they're safety nets, and it doesn't matter if you're a person or a company, um, you need to back up your data. Like at home, I have, I built my own um, motherboard, I built, uh, I have two little small little crypto miners, I also have uh, my backup, I have three backup hard drives, one for my Mac, uh, I have two solid state drives um, from Samsung for my, uh, for my, my main uh, desktop and you know one terabyte two terabyte but i routinely update them i hardly keep anything on my hard drive so if somebody was to you know break into it they wouldn't be able to steal anything because my my system is air gapped so i don't even keep it plugged in unless i'm using it and if i plug it in of course it still has two fa set up so you can't just go in and steal my stuff without you know some type of um some type of um, hacking software and now these are just the types you know, the backups, the full incremental, differential cloud and local. Local, you keep at home. Cloud, you know, where everything is stored, basically in a data farm somewhere, but it's accessible from anywhere. Um, differential, incremental, and full, all variations of what you want to change, what you want to save, how you want to save it, how much of it you want to save, depending on your what backup, um, how, I guess, thorough you want the backup to be. Um, but that's actually personal preference. And I guess for an organization uh, such as the one we're working for, you probably want to do 
uh, a full backup on most of the major systems, especially when it comes to uh, all of our software. But incremental would be fine as well if it only requires some some small changes here and there that were made since the last like update. Say VSA 10 has a software update. And we're going to be go from 10.4 to 10.5. You want to make sure that all that data is fully backed up from 10.4, just in case something happens 10.5. You can pull some of that information out and put it in there, um, and you know make it complete again, so you won't have any interruptions in service. Um, going on is um, the main reason, and I'm telling you, uh, once I get to the last slide, you'll see the main reason uh, that we want data backup is to you know protect against ransomware. And it is a full-on threat. I uh, know you've heard recently in the news about MGM getting hit. They still haven't fully recovered. People still aren't getting their full paychecks. Um, some of them you have to still, you know, you got long lines where you have to actually pay without a credit card. I mean, it's, it's pretty, um, pretty impressive what the hackers have done and what they've been able to do. And understand that they got paid. And here's the thing. They got paid. And MGM still isn't full up, uh, running and fully operational. That's scary. Now, you know that there are hardware failures, but the main issue is human error. A lot of the times, and probably I'm assuming in this case uh, with MGM, is that somebody clicked on a link somewhere that they weren't supposed to, even though they've been through extensive training, and it led to some hackers somewhere getting inside of their systems, and there you have it. It is a, it's catastrophic. Um, sometimes what it does to them and the recovery is going to be very expensive and uphill now the one thing they can't do is they can't cause an earthquake or hurricane so in natural disasters you know you want to make sure that you have your data backed up in that case and in our case too it's, it's in the cloud and pretty much everything we have now is in the cloud and for good reason because the cloud uh, data centers are located in places that are normally not subjected to um, any type I'm sorry normally not subjected to any type of um, a natural disaster uh, but in Florida you, you better have your stuff in the cloud um, mm -hmm. the hurricanes are coming it's not a matter of you know, <laughs> they're, <laughs> they're coming uh, so uh, and you know for, for again personal and professional your, your safety net is to make sure you have some type of backup solution um, you can set a schedule um, you can't automate uh, if possible, and automated, probably preferential, um, you know, network engineers, system engineers, they have to back up things all the time. So they have to set it to a schedule um, because it can't be during, you know, we can't have a full system update right now during business hours. It would crush us. It would crush anyone. You'd have to just make sure it's scheduled during a time that is convenient to where there's no one at work or very few people at work where you can get it done uh, fluent, fluently and it doesn't have to uh, interrupt any business operations. And if you can test the restore, and basically testing restores means you just go in and see if the backup was done com correctly. If you it was a, it was a full backup uh, or incremental backup, did it you know behave as expected? And that's what you want. And Again, as I quoted in the bottom, it's not a question of if data loss will happen, uh, but when. Uh, being prepared with a robust backup strategy is your best defense, and um, that has been proven with our company as well as other companies. Now, I'm not sure how thorough MGM's um, you know, backup plan was, uh, but I can tell you it couldn't have been that w good because they're still not fully operational, and that should be a warning sign to all of us, and we should all be testing our systems right now to see how our backup strategy I know we have a uh, disaster recovery um, uh, section here uh, and I'm sure they are eyes on uh, with what is happening with MGM and other companies as well um, and who's vulnerable which brings me to my last slide everybody and just look at the list I just included 20 this is there's an exhaustive list across the US and across the world of who has been attacked and who has been hit with ransomware and ransomware is not a few hundred dollars it's in the millions and it affects as you can see all types of industries from you got food you got telecommunications you have you know gambling you have school systems you have hospitals you have even you know the uh, the, the cloud actually gets hacked it can be um, but it's usually not likely. So if somebody attacks a cloud, they have been really putting in some hours and some work and probably a huge team 
uh, to be able to get into a cloud system. Um, an entire city, the whole city of Dallas, their government structure anyway. Um, you know, and like I said, even Reddit. You know, what are the chances of that happening? Um, sorry. Um, so that you know brings me to the conclusion is that you know yes, it's Cybersecurity Awareness Month, but it should be Cybersecurity Awareness Year with the way technology is moving. I mean, you know, people have been able to break into ChatGPT to get it right malicious code. That malicious code can be used and launched, you know, uh, in a hospital that could shut off, you know, power systems. So it's, it's very scary. Could get into our, you know, our water supply where we don't have access to clean water or, or electricity. Our electrical grid can get hacked and you know they're also sleeper. Um, you, you have sleepers within the systems that, you know, won't activate for another year or in case they, we get attacked or we attack somebody you know and then they activate those codes and next thing you know everything goes offline so I think it's best to be safe and make sure everybody's aware of how vulnerable they can be um, and hopefully cybersecurity awareness is taken as seriously as it should be I do not know anyone that the, the short answer is no, because all of them that I have researched were affected in some way where it took their systems offline, sometimes just briefly, uh, before they were to get called back up. But I will tell you that there are variances in how soon a, a uh, soon they come back up. For, for instance, the city of Dallas, the government organizations are notorious for having outdated software. Uh, you know, patches not done. The, the federal government is too, but, but the federal government is far and above, you know, say some place like the city of Dallas, which isn't a small city. It's a major city. Um, however, the government, the government infrastructure there as well as the government infrastructure probably in most cities across the United States, uh, outside of maybe San Francisco and some highly developed areas are not adept at handling some crisis that, uh, that you know, results as a, you know, as being victims of a cyber uh, security attack. It's just not. So, you know, where a hospital may be more prepared because they know there's lives involved, government agencies, you know, with, you know, having to deal with, you know, cutting grass and making sure your trash gets emptied, you know, they may not take it as serious. But the water supply system, you know, theirs would be more in depth. So if any of those got attacked, it just the amount of time they would have before they actually came back online. Um, but it's also based on the training of the individuals they have working for them as well. The city of Dallas may have somebody working front that used to work with Raytheon and at the top levels of cybersecurity. And if they're working there, of course, the systems, they will follow those same, you know, um, rules and regulations that they brought over from Raytheon, a public, um, publicly traded organization, company, to, you know, the government sector, which is private, non-profit. Non so it varies.